Welcome, all viewers. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is another wonderful time. We are bringing you the toxic show, whereby we get to get into a society, look at things the way they are going, and be able to analyze and give solutions, because every single day we are living in a time whereby we need God in our societies. My name is Dr. Joyce W. Charles, and I want to welcome you to the show. And together with me, I have the Apostle of God, Apostle Fred, but he's going to introduce himself. Uh, because uh, I am very excited today because of the topic we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're going to talk about drug addiction. And um, I think that's an issue that is a big issue in the society, in the church. Sometimes no one knows how to handle. But guess what? God is raising his people who have got the knowledge and the Holy Ghost. So, Karibu Sana. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Apostle Fred mm -hmm. Munyao. Yeah. Uh, I minister with CCMI. That is Center for Christ Missions International, right. uh -huh. the ministry that the Lord gave me. Yes. And we thank God for this opportunity. You're based in? Uh... We are based in Nairobi. All right. We are along Kamiti Road, uh -huh. that is off Thika Road. Okay. And uh, at a place known as Kiamumbi. All right. Yes. That is great. So now let's talk about uh, the, the topic of the day, which yes. is drug addiction. Yes. What gives you the interest? Because, I mean, sometimes people have interest with something because either they've been there or they know someone who has been there, or God has called them in that field. Which one is your case? That is either they were affected. Yes, affected. Or, or they, were, they were the ones who were yes. the victims. Yeah. Uh, personally, I've been both. Okay. I've been in drugs myself. Hey, uh, Yes, yes, yes. Like God took you from that far? Yes, yes. The Lord delivered me from uh, drugs. What drugs were you using? Uh, majorly marijuana. Hey. <laughs> okay. I don't seem like you don't. God has really done, done a lot of panel beating. I was I was a madman. A tea? Yes. Like I, crazy. Yes, like crazy. I I could uh, I could go for a whole month without taking a bath. I could put on clothes until they are tattered, without sleeping uh, in a house. Uh, the the house we were sleeping in is not like a house. Because that, the, 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 you know, the climax of it was happening in Arusha, Tanzania. Actually, not in the outskirts of Arusha, uh, Tanzania. Yeah. In a place known as Namberera. Okay. Namberera is between Arusha yeah. and Dodoma. Right. That is a place where we used to work, you know, ma 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 manual jobs. Yeah. Uh, at some farms uh, where they used to produce uh, some beans mm -hmm. and some uh, wheat and all that. There were large plant plantations. Okay. I had ran there yeah. because I couldn't cope in Nairobi. Okay, so I decided so to go anywhere. Okay. Yes, no, I decided to go anywhere out of the pressure what of pressure? the city. You must have been very young. Yes. Because you're still young. Yes. So I'm trying to do mathematics. I'm thinking, <laughs> when did you do drugs and when did you get called? And I mean, yeah, you know, you know, you know okay, I think I should. Uh, take us a little bit back uh, yeah. so that we can get a background to that. Right. Yeah. Because everybody that goes into drugs, mm -hmm. there is a trigger okay. that uh, leads them there. Okay. And uh, uh, I, 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 I always, you know, sympathize with people. Okay. Uh, when they just take it like uh, it's, a, it's a disease mm -hmm. that you can go and treat yeah. in a rehab. Yeah. You know, in a rehab, you are going to get partly treated. True. You saw the uh, the Gideri man and yeah. other people who have yes. gone to drugs uh -huh. uh, to rehab. Yeah, but somebody will come out, be you know okay for some time. Right. Then if if, if there is no uh, you know a sustained help that yeah. is coming to them, mm -hmm. they will go back okay. into drugs because the trigger could still be around. Them. Yes, okay. because they have to deal with yeah. the root cause, uh -huh. and the root cause uh, or what the things that cause people to go into drugs. Mm -hmm. the, it is it's such a wide range of things. For me, yeah. it was actually a trauma. Trauma, something happened in your life? Yes. What Immediately you after like my mom post, passed on, okay. yeah. I was seven years of age. Oh, right. And I yeah. was, uh, you know, mommy's boy. Yeah. And uh, I, I knew love from yeah. my mom. Okay. But when she passed on, yeah. then it happened that she passed on you know, and our passing on was surrounded by a lot of uh, things that, uh, rumors and things that were going around. Mm -hmm. that she had been bewitched. Okay. And uh, the person who bewitched her yeah. was still around. 
And but you're seven years feared. old. Yeah, That's but people too feared young. her. Yeah. Nobody would confront her. The witch now. The witch now. Okay. So it was it was something that yeah. we also began to fear. Uh -huh. Because now if this has happened to our mom mm -hmm. and the person who is said to have done it is still at large, yeah. around mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, a relative, yeah. somebody uh, who is, you know, has access to us every yeah. every day. Yeah. We're even eating food at their place. Jesus. So how will we survive? Yeah. And so I began to ask myself uh -huh. questions yeah. that uh, would seem to be, uh, you know, a reserve for the mature people. Yeah. When I yeah. was still very young. Seven is very young. Because I wanted to know for sure, will I survive? Or am I going to try and survive and then die a premature death? Yeah. Uh, before I even become anything. Yeah. And I began to think. Uh -huh. And uh, in the course of that, of course at first, just like a child, mm -hmm. but something happened. Yeah. That I began to interact mm -hmm. with, 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 with a voice. Okay. I never knew that time it was the voice of God. Okay. But I began to interact with like that voice. Like you're hearing, uh, naturally you're hearing a voice. I would, we would have conversations. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's on another show. It is like, uh, <laughs> you know, even when I began to hallucinate, uh -huh. I couldn't tell the difference because... Because you already knew a, a specific voice. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I could, I could tell there's a conversation. So I, I could actually engage without, you know, fear. <laughs> so now, what was, was the content of the... Because, of course, now that you know God very well, yes. you, there must have <clears> been <throat> something that caused you to know that was God, and when you yes. were hallucinating, you know that cannot be exactly. God. Exactly. Uh -huh. The only thing I'm saying, I could not tell the difference, is I yeah. couldn't, you know, put a boundary to, yeah. I want to listen to this voice yeah. and not this one. So engage, engage all the voices that okay. were coming. Yeah. But... In the initial stages, I could tell. I couldn't tell it is God, yeah. but I could tell. Yeah. I have a friend uh -huh. who speaks to me because I tried suicide over ten times. Over ten times. Yes, and I, it's not that like I would say I want to commit. No, I would decide today I'm not going back home because immediately after my mom passed away, mm -hmm. we, uh, my dad mar remarried. Immediately. Immediately. How is that? And that was actually a year later. Okay. And so we began to live with this, with our stepmother. Yeah. My my dad used to come home only at the end of the month. Oh yes. So he was out completely out of touch yeah. with us. He couldn't know what is going on yeah. in our lives. How was life with the stepmom? Uh unbearable. Okay. It was terrible. Yeah. Uh, but we have moved on and we have, of course. We have but so it means then on. at that point it made it even worse because when you lose a mom, yes. you, you don't need another crazy yes. human so the being. Pain, yeah. The pain of you have lost your mom mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Austin's mom was the kind who could tell you openly okay. that your mother is dead. Yes. Go and pick, ah. you, pick her from the grave. Uh -huh. you know? Oh, Lord. And, uh, you know, those, I began to know. How, how terrible that death is, was. That is very demonic. Yeah. So uh -huh. uh, that, uh, that happened over a period of time. Yes, yes. And it seemed like she concentrated more on me yeah. than with all the other kids. Uh -huh. Because, of course, I was the same age with, with, her, the... with, with, with her firstborn. Okay. With her firstborn. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it happened that I used to be very bright in school. My half-brother used to be one of the poor boys in class. Okay. And we're in the same class. Yeah. So you can expect the jealous and course, all that. Yeah. So it intensified the kind of uh, 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 pain that was coming my way. Yeah. Uh, from home now. Okay. So when I was uh, 12 mm -hmm. is when I actually discovered that the person who has been speaking to me is actually God. Okay. What made you discover that? Uh, it's another long story. Yeah. It is. It is <laughs> <laughs> okay. It was, one day I went into the house. Yeah. Of course, after those episodes of being mistreated and uh -huh. beaten up and, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, all kinds of uh, mistreatments that you can, you know, really think of. Mm -hmm. I went in the house and I found, uh, I wanted to do my studies, okay. but I found the Bible there. All right. And I said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay. So I can study a bit. So you knew some scriptures? Yes. Our mom had taught us okay. many scriptures. You wow. see, if you train a child yeah. in the way they should go, uh -huh. even when they grow old, it is not very easy for them to depart. The Bible says they will Lord. not. Yeah. They will not depart from that, uh -huh. uh, that path. Okay. So I knew some scriptures. And okay. I knew the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. And also at home, yeah. it was strictly uh, a rule that everybody has to go for Sunday school. Okay. So at least we've got yeah, something. You know, some foundation. Yeah. 
And so I went in there and I picked the Bible. I began to read. Mm -hmm. I can't tell where exactly I read. Yeah. But I tend to think, but that's just a thinking, yeah. that I was reading the story of Joseph or something. Okay. But every time I read that story, yeah. I cry alone. All right. Because it is like my story. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. And so I was reading a story that was very captivating. Yeah. Until I got to a place where I began th to think. Uh -huh. And I stopped reading. Yeah. And God began to speak to me. Uh, then you could connect the voice. Yes. With the scriptures. Yes. Actually, uh -huh. that is the day yeah. that God asked me, how do you see it being a pastor? Ah, at the age of 12. At the age of 12. Wow. But I said, I can't be a pastor. Yeah. Then he asked me why. Uh-huh. I said, because pastors are very poor. <laughs> and I don't want to be poor. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then... Uh, that was a good conversation. Yes. And yeah. then in, the, in my thinking, I said, but uh -huh. even if they were poor, yeah. but if God was answering their prayer, yeah. I still serve you. Uh-huh. But I told him, but you don't answer their prayers. Yeah. <laughs> they are poor. And you're not answering their prayers. Yeah. There is nothing to explain their poverty. Wow. And I gave him an example. Yeah. I told him, Elijah, I believe he was poor. Yeah. The guy was, you know, putting on a... Uh, 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 John the Baptist. No, Elijah. Uh -huh. okay. Elijah. Yeah. He was, he had a coat, a, right. a camel yeah. skin something. Yes, yes. And the guy <laughs> never had a home. Yeah. In fact, the only place we see him living at our home is where he was taken in yeah. by, by the widow. The widow. Okay, so you he was poor, yeah. But when he prays, uh -huh. something would happen, yeah. Whether he says the rains to stop, they will stop. stop, yeah. When he says now it is time for the rains to come, mm -hmm. the rains will come. Yeah. His poverty could be explained by how God was answering his prayers. Uh -huh. But here we have pastors who are poor, <laughs> and they and they God is not answering their prayers. Uh -huh. And I told him, okay, even if that was happening. But at least defend them. Mm -hmm. Fight their battles. Yeah, yeah. Let it be that they are poor. Mm -hmm. There is no tangible evidence that you answer their prayers. True. But you fight for them. Okay. Touch not my anointed ones. Uh -huh. And I gave him an example of Elisha. Yeah. That he fought for him, even against children. True. So how comes today the yeah. Bible is something else and our life's experience is yeah. very different. Uh -huh. And so I told God, but I, I can't be a pastor because of those three reasons. Yes. And so? And then he told me, no, yeah. that is not me. Okay. And he turned to me. Yeah. Behind me there was a calendar. Yes. Of Reynard Bonke. Mm -hmm. Bonke's crusade. Yeah. And, and, and it was written, the lame walk, the blind see, yeah. the deaf hear, uh -huh. the gospel is preached to the poor. Yeah. And he told me, this is me. He never oh. told me, this is my, my servant. Uh -huh. He said, this is me. Wow. And this is what I am doing. I was confused, totally confused. Because those are two he different couldn't worlds. say anything else because what I had seen yeah. and what he's saying it is him yeah. were totally different. Okay. So that, that was now uh, when I was 12. Yeah. I, I don't want to get into that yes. line uh -huh. because it's a long one. Yeah. I know we, it's a story for another day. Yes. But then the, 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 the situation at home was not changing. Mm -hmm. There was still the mistreatments coming. Yeah. I would go without food so many days. I'll be chased away from home at night. And I would sleep, sleep outside. Okay. I would sleep with the cows in the cow shed. I would, uh, you know, be overworked mm -hmm. and, you know, all those yeah. kind of things. Mm -hmm. So I became, uh, you know, so traumatized yeah. by what I was experiencing mm -hmm. at the backdrop of, my, of losing my mother. Yeah. And also, I became, I became, uh, I became toxic. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 to yourself. Yes, I, I, to... I began to have to harbor a lot of resentment. Yes, yes, for life itself. Yeah, for family, for uh -huh. home. Yeah, I felt like I would need to be somewhere. Yeah, where these rules are not applicable. Yeah, I became uh, also. You know, when, whenever we go to school, mm -hmm. I would be at peace. Yeah, at school I was so good mm -hmm. in school, but then it happened that my my stepmother began to come to school and report me. Ah. So the teachers thought I'm good, but the report coming from home is boy. that I am a very bad boy. Very bad boy. So I gave up, and I remember talking to the teachers in my mm vernacular, -hmm. and I told them now, because it seems that that the people giving you reports from home yeah. are more students than I am. Yeah, I want to leave school. Okay, what did they say? And the end teacher was that is a joke. Yeah, I walked out. Okay, I walked out of school. I became very arrogant in school. Uh -huh. I became indisciplined. All right. And that is how I, be, I, I, I got myself uh, into some gateway drugs. All right. 
I began to taste uh, cigarettes. So now you went into the streets, or how you still do those I'm things still and at you home. back home? Okay. Yes, I'm still at home. All right. But because I'm in boarding school, so yeah. I'm at home the only one month. Okay. And we are back to school yeah. and all that, and the tuitions and all that. So yeah. much of my time now, uh, it's more by that school. time I'm I'm in high school. Yeah. So much of my time is in high school in school. Yeah. But still, I couldn't stay at home. Okay. For the entire vacation. One month. Yeah. Because you see, at first it began by mm -hmm. like a mistreatment. Yeah. But now, I became a ruler. Mm -hmm. So whatever I'm being accused of at it's home became now. real now. Yeah. 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 It, it is. But you see now, nobody is digging down to know what's the root cause of yes, all this. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would feel I wouldn't want to be a bad boy. Yeah. But here I am. Already I have the tag. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was in school. Now I began. I became a ruler in school. Mm -hmm. And ruler at home. So I'd go home one week, I would not stay at home, i will be chased away from home, i will go in the village and stay with any family that can take me in. Wow. Yeah. So, so is that where you go to now begin with the drugs? Or yes, that's where I began with the gateway drugs. When you're still in high in school? In high school. That's when I began. The gateway drugs are things like cigarettes mm -hmm. and they're not hard drugs. Yeah. So cigarettes, uh, alcohol, mm -hmm. so I would, you know, in the company of yeah. the other unruly young men. True. We would go to drink. Uh -huh. And sometimes we drink when we are still in school. Where is the money coming from? The pocket money? There are, there are people that the devil has empowered <laughs> to ruin destinies. Yeah. And they are ready to spend to ruin a destiny. So the devil also gives resources. I had friends yeah. Yeah. who could buy you any kind of alcohol but never give you a single cent. Wow. Look at Even that. if you work for them. Yeah. They will never give you a single cent. But they'll tell you, come, let's go and have a party. Let's go yeah, drink. Take a drink. And we'll go there and drink yeah. ourselves silly. Yeah. But they will not give you anything. Anything. That is really just yeah. demonic empowerment. It, to is. Destiny. it is. It is. And that is actually the experience of many young people. Yeah. They don't drink because they want to drink. Uh -huh. But maybe they worked for somebody. Yeah. And that person seemed like they can, they are promising. Yeah. They can help them. Mm -hmm. They even promised them, I'm going to look for a job for you. Yeah. I'm going to help you get a job and yeah. all that. Yeah. But their plan is not to help. It's actually enslavement. I, I've lived in South Africa for yeah. several years. Yes. And one of the ways that uh, most of the people have stayed in slavery yeah. was the fact that you were allowed, as a worker, yeah. you were allowed to go to a club or somebody who sells liquor yes. and drink as much as you can. Uh -huh. Your boss will pay yes. with the salary. Yes. So by the time you're getting your salary, maybe next Friday because you're a casual uh, laborer, yeah. already you have drunk yes. all the money all for the that money. week. So and you, you get to become a slave. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Now you work to pay. Yes. You don't work to be paid. No, you work, you work to, pay. to pay. And they own uh, those cl uh, clubs. Exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. So that was happening to us. Uh -huh. And uh, I got to a place where, you know, once you, you begin to drink. Yes. Nobody th thinks that they are going to be addicted. True. Is Everybody this? thinks they are clever yeah. than the person who is already addicted. Uh -huh. You say they are the ones who didn't you know, plan their lives well. Yeah. They should have drunk, not that way. Yeah. And myself, I'm going to be clever enough. Yeah. But then you realize mm -hmm. that the, the, the drug, whatever it is, yeah. begins to control you. Okay. Uh, that is when you, you become dependent, mm -hmm. you know, a dependent on yeah. a, on a, on on a particular drug. Or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. you can't do without it. Mm -hmm. You're not even addicted, yeah. but you're dependent on that on drug. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like the people who take sleeping pills yeah. and they cannot sleep uh -huh. without, without them. them. Yeah. That person is not yet addicted, uh -huh. but they are dependent, dependent. on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. They cannot do without it, yeah. but they are not yet addicted because it is not yet, if they, if they stop, yeah. They may not have the hallucinations yeah. or the shakings mm -hmm. or those, you know, those um, negative effects. Mm -hmm. uh, withdrawal, is, uh, you may not see the signs of withdrawal okay. at that particular time. All right. But they can't stop. Okay. It's like you are on a free fall now. Yeah, yeah. You will have to get, you know the next stage yeah. is addiction. Uh -huh. But you can't stop yourself. So now at that specific point, uh, sorry I'm stopping you, but I'm thinking that's yes. very important. Yes. Because there's somebody right now, they, they can't, they don't even consider addiction because all they need is just to take a few pain medication every yeah. day. Yeah. And they're dependent, like you're saying. And they're not thinking if that trend continues like that, yes. 
So people need to realize that they need help at the early stages because exactly. Uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. And you know, addiction, there is a spirit behind every drug. Mm -hmm. You hear that. There is a spirit behind Be every I'll, drug. I'll, 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 I'll elaborate that. Yeah. Uh, just in a short, when we get to uh, how I began to take marijuana. Okay. There is a spirit okay. behind every drug. And if, if someone doesn't defeat that spirit, mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. They are enslaved. Okay. Yeah. So in my case, mm -hmm. when, um, you know, when things became very tough, yeah. I had avoided completely mm -hmm. to smoke weed okay. because I saw my friends uh, smoke it mm -hmm. and I had seen them, you know, the way they would, you know, just uh, be uncontrollably, yeah. uh, you know, they would be going in a, in, in a way that I wouldn't want to behave that way. Okay. I wanted to be <laughs> to be high, yeah. but not but not their capacity. Yes, yeah. So I I tried as much as I could, form one, form two, form three, form four. Mm -hmm. But when I was in form four, mm -hmm. something happened. Yeah. That um, in first term, mm -hmm. I began to have an experience mm -hmm. that was so strange. I would be in class. Mm -hmm. Then I'll begin to feel, to hear a conversation going on mm -hmm. within me, okay. in my mind. Yeah. And I'll receive like instructions. Okay. On what to do. Instructions so, on what? Whether it is a strike that is supposed to happen in the school. Yeah. I was so tiny. Okay. But I'll lead it. Wow. Okay. I was so tiny. But whatever I say, it will be picked. So you had some kind of, should I call it uh, demonic influence or was it positive? It is, a All demonic right. influence. Okay. And uh, I would even be surprised myself. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> At the level which you And I would go and cry when I'm alone. But yeah. people are considering me to be a hero. Okay. Many of these young men that you see, even in the universities, they seem to be leading demonstrations. Yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. care whether uh -huh. they are shot or yeah. not, mm -hmm. whether they, where they confront the police. Yeah. It is not them. They are stolen. Yeah. They are stolen. Yeah. You see, there's a scripture in, that is the only scripture we read now. Yeah. 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 In, in Isaiah, uh -huh. in Isaiah 42, verse 22, says, But mm -hmm. this is a people robbed and yeah. spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid, they are hid in prison houses. Mm -hmm. They are for a prey mm -hmm. and none delivereth. Yeah. For a spoil. And Nancy, Nancy stressed off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So they are there. Mm -hmm. But they are not they are not doing it because they would want to do it. Many of them cry. Mm -hmm. They they are heroes during the daytime. Yeah. When they are taken into those cells, they cry. They when they are alone, when the demonic influence, the, the demonic empowerment, mm -hmm. anointing, yeah. when it lifts, yeah. they realize who they are. Mm -hmm. They cry because they know this is not me. Okay. But now the, the behavior is so synonymous with them, mm -hmm. so much that they cannot divorce themselves from it, mm -hmm. otherwise they will lose their brand. Now, uh, I want to ask you something that possibly has nothing to do much with that, but yes. I, I just want you to talk maybe a minute on the voices. Yes. The reason I'm asking that is because um, one of the things I have discovered with giftings, or some you are born with, like that one hearing, yeah. um, I, I, I may not know at which stage you began to hear the voices yeah. but i've noted most of the people who go into drugs yeah. they will always talk about voices yes whether it's in the mind or it is a voice that they can you know like hear yeah it is there yes so um and because they are lonely people yes it is it's good for them to for them uh -huh. they, they want that engagement of yes. a conversation yes but then is is like once you have started walking on the road of hearing voices yeah. it's very hard for you to turn back is it that these voices control you do they threaten you did you get to a place where you could not you're having conversation in your mind can't you say like i mean the devil is alive i'm not listening to this at that point in time yes you actually, many people they don't even know yeah. that these are just voices. Okay. You see, yeah. people, everybody thinks yeah. that what is happening in their world yeah. 
is what is happening with everybody else. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So and the devil tries to convince you yeah. that it is not only you. Yeah. Everybody else. Yes. As these conversations mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. But this is not true. It is not true. It's not true. Yeah. But if they hear, yeah. for example, they hear us speaking mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. the devil cannot convince that person. Yeah. Again, that yes. the voices you are hearing yeah. are being heard by everybody. You know, the reason why I brought that up is because yes. that is even how great people who are born prophets, yes. they lose it uh -huh. and they go into divination. Yes. Because there is an open line. I'm talking about that because I'm very prophetic. Yes. So there is an open line. And if yes. you don't really understand God well, yes. you lose it completely. Uh -huh. So that's the same line that the devil uses with drug addiction. Exactly. Uh -huh. The enemy wants yeah. that channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wants that channel. Yeah. The TV station right now, Oracle yeah. TV, mm -hmm. it is a channel yeah. like any other channel. True. If a drug lord yeah. gets hold of that channel, I'm telling it you. will still broadcast. Yes. But not the word. Yes. True. It will broadcast what that person carries. Yes. Like right now, whatever we do here, mm -hmm. it is controlled by the spirit yeah. of the person who received it yeah. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that is why we find a platform like this one. Yeah, yeah. That, those voices, yeah. uh, maybe I can, you can pick it from my story. Mm -hmm. When I began to converse with God, I thank God that the first voice I had was his voice. Exactly, that's what I'm bringing, because you have the voice of God. Yes. Now you are in high school, yes. you're hearing something else. Yes. So the channel is there, but yes. the user exactly. has changed. And I could tell yeah. that this is not that one. The voice that I, I, uh -huh. I know. Okay. But it took, you know, it took me some time mm -hmm. until I wanted to silence all the voices. All right. That I was here, including the voice was, of God. Okay. You are, you are done. I had got to a place where I didn't want any voice. Okay. Actually, that is how, yeah. when I was in form form, mm -hmm. and I got into, uh, you know, every drinking, mm -hmm. I was excommunicated twice. Is that form. demon to take away your star? How do you yes. get excommunicated in form four? Twice. Oh, I was in Lord. class for only two months the entire year. You see, that's a demon. It's a demon. And actually, I, there were people that were now uh, taking the initiative of mm -hmm. making sure that I don't recover. Oh. They would be there every weekend uh -huh. to help me go deeper into I... the thing. You see, mentorship yeah. in the kingdom mm -hmm. is key. Yeah. Because many people would have, be, would have very easily got themselves out of that snare True. if there is someone to lead them out. Yeah. But when we are silent... Mm -hmm. And when we think that everybody will know, will know mm -hmm. how to, how to p find their way yeah. out, then we leave the people to be mentored. That is why the scripture you have read says, yeah. nobody says deliver, exactly. nobody says restore, because somebody yes. else, apart from this one who is under this demonic yes. influence, yes. should come on board and exactly. help them. All right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you see, the, 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 the voice that I was hearing, mm -hmm. I wanted to silence it completely. Okay. Because I, re I realized now, I have an alien voice, but I also didn't want to be a preacher. Okay. I wanted to be born again, yeah. but not to be a preacher. Okay. So I, I said, because the voice of God wants me to be a preacher, mm -hmm. and the other voices, to... they want to ruin me. Yeah. I don't want any. Okay. I want to silence all of them. Yeah. And that's when I began to drink heavily. For the first time, mm -hmm. I smoked weed because I realized that the alcohol was no longer getting me to a place where I forget myself completely. Yeah. And you don't I will be so drunk, yeah. but I'm very conscious. <laughs> okay. I will be understanding everything. Yeah. As I didn't want that. I want okay. a total blackout. Okay. So I was looking for something that can give me a total blackout, mm -hmm. so that I don't ex because these voices were tormenting me. Okay. And so I began to drink, mm -hmm. and then smoke a little bit of weed. Yeah. Uh, then I remembered, I am going back to sit for my exam. Yeah. I'll be so confused mm -hmm. if I continue with the weed. Okay. So I stopped the weed. All right. You see, that is the initial stage. Yeah. So I said, let me stop this thing. Okay. So that I will be sober yeah. on the day that I'm sitting my exam. Uh -huh. And I prayed. Mm -hmm. But I'm not even born again. And you, you prayed. But we have been taught prayer by my mom. Okay. We would pray every night, yeah. pray over food, yeah. pray before we sleep and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. So I could recollect a few, uh, you know, words here and there yeah. and make up a prayer. Uh -huh. So when I was uh, called back to school. Yes. I prayed, yeah. and I said, God, you know, yes. what is happening with me is not anything that anybody can understand. Okay. 
but you can understand mm-hmm. that it is not my wish yeah. to be the way I am. Mm-hmm. I want to be better. Mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah. Actually, I've written one of the chapters in my book, yeah. uh, The Seed of God Prevails, mm-hmm. is that is, is struggles in high school. Mm-hmm. Those hidden those struggles right. that nobody has been able to know mm-hmm. that you are going through them. Yeah, yeah. Because the worst enemy in drug addiction yeah. is silence. Okay, so if you're struggling with drugs, speak you're going to have to get somebody speak who out. you feel safe with yes. and speak to them. Speak out. Because again, it's shameful yes. to go telling somebody that I'm struggling with this marijuana thing, I've had it now for a month. Yes. Uh, you may not know how to begin that conversation, especially with yes. the society we have. Uh-huh. Very few pastors will sit with you. I'm using pastors yes. because the church is the answer for the society. Yes. Now imagine a young man or a young girl walking in your office and telling you, Pastor, praise the Lord, amen. I need some help mm-hmm. because I've been smoking marijuana. Yeah. You can imagine the, the reaction of yeah. that man of yeah. God. Most of the time they may not know what to say. Yeah. Or they may tell them, why do you, uh, why do you need it? Uh-huh. Because they, they have never been in the shoes of the user. Yeah. So continue. Actually, with your when story. you don't mm-hmm. have anything to say, yeah. allow them to speak. Okay. Because as they speak, yeah. some healing is taking place. All right. Many times, mm-hmm. people are struggling with stuff. Yeah. They don't want advice. Mm-hmm. They don't need All right. advice. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they already believe yeah. that they don't know what they are going through. True. So trying to give them yes, advice yes. is even more irritating. But if you listen to them, yeah. they already begin to build. Okay. They begin to build confidence ah. that there is somebody yeah. who can listen to mm-hmm. me. Because you want actually all what you're doing with these drugs, you're trying to scream. Yes. I need help. Yes. Only that you're doing it in the wrong way. Exactly. Aha. Uh-huh. So I began to you know, engage myself. Because I stopped that because of the exam. Of the exam. Uh-huh. And I prayed. And I uh-huh. told God, you know, yeah. I've not studied yet okay. for this exam. <laughs> All right. And I don't, there is no chance of me repeating this exam. Okay. You know the situation at home? Yeah. I cannot be allowed yeah. to spend another, you know, other, 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 another year of school fees mm-hmm. uh, in school. Nobody yeah. will, will pay for me. Yeah. So I don't want to get anything mm-hmm. that will be so shameful yeah. and that I cannot use. Mm-hmm. Let me get something yeah. that I can be able to advance. Yeah. So I prayed. And God hears prayer. Mm-hmm. When the exam, the exam's results were out, mm-hmm. I talked to the class. What? Yes. Wow. We were two of us yeah. who tied. Uh-huh. Number one. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't attain to, you know, the marks that you can yeah. be able. You know, you're, number one, you're, yeah. you're, a cha- you're a village cha- champion. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot compete, True. you know, with the people who, are, who have been studying. Mm-hmm. You can compete in your school, yeah. but not... I normally tell people, yeah. if you're you are preparing for a national exam, yeah. don't prepare with your class in mind. True. True. Prepare with the nation, yeah. you know, with the, with the other people mm-hmm. who are even more privileged than you. Yeah. And so we were number one. Mm-hmm. And I got uh, my grade mm-hmm. that I had to do some uh, bridging before I could go, go to, to campus, campus or something, yeah. And uh, I thank God for that. Mm-hmm. But immediately after the exam, yeah. we had a farm worker okay. who was using you know, marijuana. Okay. So he's the one who introduced me properly now. So the devil had brought someone close to yes, you? Yes, yes. Yeah. And we began to smoke together with him. But I never stayed at home mm-hmm. for long. Mm-hmm. I came to Nairobi mm-hmm. the, in December, that yeah. same year. Yeah. Because now I didn't want to stay at home. Mm-hmm. When I came to Nairobi, I came to the same, same farm work. Okay. Because he had come to Nairobi yeah. earlier before me. Uh-huh. And so he, he, he welcomed me. But when he realized that it's like I was about to get maybe a better job, mm-hmm. he kicked me out. Okay. So I was in the streets. Yeah. In Nairobi. Mm-hmm. I've slept in the streets. Oh, God. In Nairobi. Yeah. Uh, for some days. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Uruma. Okay. And, um, you know, when you are there, you want to be like the people who can sleep outside. Yeah, yeah. So that you like it or not. You have to. You get yourself yeah. warm. Yeah. With drugs. True. You know? And forget about the environment, the exactly. cold, the hunger. So that is the time that I felt no. I've been wanting to ask, don't you have like uh, good relatives? 
like an aunt you can run to. Because I'm thinking right now, if I have a family member yes, who yes, yes. is possibly going through something mm -hmm. and I get to know. Yes. Or like now your mom died. Yes. While there are no family members, or is it that society can be just too busy that we even forget uh, people don't just move on when we have facing a death? Uh -huh. Yeah. The, I have very good hands. Yeah. Even now. Uh -huh. Very good ones. Okay. But that time, yeah. they also bring up their own children. All right. So they were very busy. Yeah. We were actually out of touch okay. with them. All right. And so I decide I need to exit from Nairobi. Okay. Nairobi is unbearable for me. Yeah. And so I ran to Tanzania. To who now? What made you think Tanzania? The voices or you Actually, just... I wanted to go to a place where uh -huh. the pressures yeah. yes. I was facing of life uh -huh. will not be there, yes. number one. Yes. Number two, mm -hmm. I wanted to go to a place where I can start afresh. Okay. Where nobody knew me and nobody, you know, would judge me by, by what they know about me. Okay. So, a place where everybody will... Take me for who I am now. So did you Not, succeed with the with the move? I I went before I went to Tanzania. I had to tell the people around us around me that time that I'm going to Uganda because I didn't want anybody to follow. Okay. Me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so I got hold of a young man um, who, who had come to Nairobi from yeah. Tanzania uh -huh. to visit uh, uh, the sister, mm -hmm. and I I lied to the brother-in-law, yeah. that I am a Tanzanian, uh -huh. I know their home, yeah. and I will take him there. Mm -hmm. Because he was refusing to allow him to go alone. Uh -huh. And so, you, you know, see those demonic uh, kind of, you know, to strategies, uh, yeah, thoughts, and, yeah. you know, they just come into your mind and yeah. you are acting according to a script that yeah. you don't know. But it works, uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So we went to Tanzania. As we were going mm -hmm. around Kajiado area, mm -hmm. the, 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 the car broke down. Mm -hmm. And I was like, God, what is happening? Mm -hmm. And God to told me, it is because of you. You are not supposed to go. You're going the wrong direction. And then I say, God, okay, it's okay. Yeah. Just forgive me for trying to go without asking you. But now just allow me to go. And at the back of my mind, I'm saying, what shall I do? Mm -hmm. Once I go, yeah. I'm not coming back. Because I thought the voices would yeah. be left in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I'll be out there. So I went to uh, Moshi in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And I began to work at a farm mm -hmm. of a certain uh, white man there. Yeah. And because I could speak English, and the rest of the uh, people around there, mm -hmm. they couldn't speak English. Yeah. So I became a very close friend to the uh, white man. Yeah. Because in Tanzania, mostly they, they don't, they, they, that time actually they were not studying at all mm -hmm. in English. Okay. Everything was done in Swahili. Yeah. So I could be like his link yeah. to the other workers and all that. Yeah. And so within a short time, I was able to, you know, get myself some yeah. little earnings here and there. Mm -hmm. But then, the very voices I was running away from home, yeah. they began now to come to me, and then I would see faces. Hey, now you're seeing. It's real hallucinations. You're not just hearing, you're seeing. Yes, yeah. yes, real yeah. hallucinations. Mm -hmm. And um, not just hallucinations. Mm -hmm. That's why I say every drug mm -hmm. has a... A, a spirit, a behind. demon spirit yeah. behind it. Yeah. Because we would speak to Bang mm -hmm. uh, and we would tell it what we want it to do in us. Ah? It's a worship. Oh my goodness. It's a worship. If somebody rolled a roll of Bang today mm -hmm. and speak to it yeah. and tell it, uh, I want to maybe cultivate because they are working maybe yeah. in a farm. Uh -huh. And I want to cultivate today and finish, you know, the entire portion that I have to finish today. Mm -hmm. If they drop it, and somebody else picks it, yeah. who never heard what they said, uh -huh. and they smoke it, they will immediately be directed to cultivate it. Huh? They will That's cultivate why anywhere. they behave the way they do? Yes. Oh my God. I yes. didn't know. I don't know our, uh, our viewers, possibly you're like shocked yeah. like me because I've yeah. known people who do drugs, especially marijuana. Yes. They got very weird ways. They can be very hardworking. Yeah. Or if that thing told them to just overdress. They will do that. They will do that. <laughs> yes. And some, some of the bosses who are wicked, uh -huh. they also do uh, prepare drugs mm -hmm. for their workers. So they bring, like we had a boss uh, in, in, in Madari North area. Yeah. I used to work for him. Mm -hmm. And he would bring us bang. And give you us what? I mean, how do you do we, that to your workers? We used to work, it, it was our hotel that we yeah. used to work in. Uh -huh. 
And so he knew that the work, kind of work that we were doing, you can't do when you are sober. What work was that? You wake up at 4 a.m., uh -huh. you sleep at midnight when you are very tired, and you, have you wake, wake up, up again, again at 4 again, and it's a routine every day. And uh, if you do that for maybe two or three days, you realize that the body will tell yeah, you no. The body will shut down. Break. Yes. So they will give you drugs yes. to keep you like a machine. And now they will program them. Okay. okay. Yeah. They will program them. So as, you, as long as you are smoking it, you will be okay working for them. And uh, actually, <laughs> the good thing is, one day I was preaching mm -hmm. at... Um, Mombasa, JCC, yes. at Bishop Lai's church, uh -huh. in the morning glory, uh -huh. and I see the same man ah. in the congregation. Yes. I saw it, my former boss, yes. the one who used to bring us those drugs. Uh -huh. He had already received the Lord, uh -huh. and he was serving God now. But I was a preacher. Yes. And so after the message, I went to him, uh -huh. and I asked, do you remember me? Yeah. He couldn't remember. Uh -huh. And I narrated the story to him. Then he remembered. He remembered. And is born again right yeah. now. Uh -huh. But that time, yeah. you can see what people can do. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, in that time of weakness. Yes, 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 yes. And so, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know whether we are going to get to the place where yeah. uh, we can talk about uh, uh, the, the solutions mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. this. Yeah, yes. Because for sure, yeah. if somebody is in drugs today, yeah. they will, there are many things that nobody can understand them. Yeah. Uh, because every person has a different experience. So now let's begin with, we have like maybe two minutes to go. Yes. But who do they go to? Because I mean, if, if, yes. if the life of this person is already possibly programmed by another person. Yes. I also want to believe maybe the people who sell yes. also do the programming. Exactly. Because they might program, you must go back to them every time. Yes. I mean, I don't know whether you understand spiritual warfare, yes. but this is real stuff now we're hearing here. It is here. part of food sacrificed to idols. I don't think we can finish with Apostle Fred today. You all can agree that this is very serious things that we are hearing. Yeah. Because um, to our young people, yeah. it's just something that makes you high. Uh -huh. But to the real dealers of these things, they, 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 are, they are serving altars. Yes. Exactly. Oh that God. is it. They are serving altars. And they have to service them properly. Yeah. And because they have to get the clients, mm -hmm. they present those drugs you know, to their demonic masters Jesus. upon the altars. And so when somebody begins, the demons of the business, they enter to these people. And so they have to go back and go back again and go back again. Yeah. And most of the people are committing suicide today. Mm -hmm. It's because they have been sacrificed yes. through the drugs. Wow. Wow. Now, we are out of time, but we are going to have another episode because we have to hear how did he come out. I mean, how did God rescue him? Because I believe God was involved. Yes, yes. Yeah, how, did God, yeah, how did God rescue him? And uh, how do you get help? Because at the end of the day, I know there is a lot of you parents and maybe brothers and sisters watching. You're like, that is my brother he's talking about. That is my sister. Or that is me. Or that is my son. We have these drugs issues all over. And uh, we are in a, in a, in a uh, country where, uh, like you're saying, um, th some drugs don't seem like it's a big deal. Just because it's marijuana. Actually, one of the things I noted, I live in South Africa and most of my members, uh, they came when they were maybe totally high or they were carrying a gun or a knife. That's the kind of people I pastored. Mm. And uh, if, if, if a mother would come and tell you, pray for my son, they would only come because the son is in heroin. Mm. But if the son, or cocaine, or some other mm. crazy drugs, drugs yeah. Yeah? but if the son is in marijuana, that's not a prayer request. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. That's just, no, they're only smoking marijuana now. So pastor, things are going on well. Yes, but now from what Apostle is telling us, there is no good drug or not very serious drug. Mm, that's true. Yes, so next time on the Toxic Show, the very same program is going to uh, continue. Make sure that you call someone who needs help, who needs direction, because we need to rescue our generation. Our young people are committing suicide because if they hear those voices and the voices is saying kill yourself, mm. that is what they do. God bless you until next time. Bye-bye.